right let's continue on with the car and get this panel see if we can get all this done it's a little hot right now i kind of started a little late today and you can see that bright shiny bright sunny sky it is hot so nice and dry though not too bad so let's get in here and let's see if we can lift this thing up inside the garage maybe i'll be lucky enough huh I didn't mean it hit the garage door there, huh? But uh, if I can lift it up and then put it on the stand up in here, then I don't have to work in the heat. And I can think I got enough room to do it other than getting the garage door open. I think I can go forward a little bit more and I can pull the cherry picker out and just work right here. So let's do it. So I need to rough cut a piece for this side. So I'm going to use this side as a pattern. So let me get up here, do that in a second. All right, let's see what we've got here. I'm gonna get this whole piece in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rough cut a piece out first. So it needs to go just below this, right? If you can see, I don't know if you can see this in frame, but it's just below that so I can, Go to right. About there. Just cut a square piece out first. And then we'll clamp that on there and trace it. And then we'll make the piece for the other side. It's always easy. There's nothing really to it. Just using something as a pattern and tracing it. Right, I did that a little bit wrong, but that's okay. Try to get down here again. And just kind of give myself enough. I can go straight off the bottom like that. And I'm going to trace it from the inside where I can see the shape. Like that. Well, let's cut that with the scissors. All right. We're going in. So, you know, I'll tell you guys, one of my favorite, all-time favorite movies from a long time ago, and one that kind of really changed my perspective on a lot of things. I used to be really, you know, really worried about everything being correct and all that stuff and then came good old the movie called captain ron and uh you know you might have watched that movie and you might have not got it you know but i'll tell you if you haven't watched it haven't watched it in a while watch captain ron and uh, I'm tracing the inside of this so I kind of have a rough idea of where the line is. I'm going to cut above it. But, um, so I got that. But, you know, Captain Rum, what he would say is, uh, you know, he's out in the boat in the ocean. Maybe you've never seen the movie. And uh, crazy and stupid as the movie was, there was a good lesson in there for a lot of people is he would just stop and he says well what if you get well, you know you don't have any navigation equipment to go out in the ocean he just goes yeah you just stop somewhere and ask directions and you think about it people get all freaked out about everything being right and being on the ship and being out of the ocean and being out everywhere and he just figures well, we're in the caribbean you know there's a million islands out here and uh he just stopped somewhere and asked directions. Hope it's not a bad island, but most of the time I guess it ended up okay. And there's a lot of guys like him that live a little bit on the limb and they get by just fine. You know, and, and so many of us think that if we don't do everything perfectly right and all this other stuff that we're going to end up in this terrible place, you know. Yeah, well... Just stop some words and ask directions. And I'm not saying, you know, be lazy and try to do stuff right. I'm just saying, 
don't overthink everything to the point where you just, you know, you're thinking too much. Just do, think enough, do the job, and then if you mess up, you just cut it out and fix it. There's no more to it than that. All right, so I got this piece cut out for here. I just made it kind of extra long. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend this edge here and kind of cut around that grill. I may just put this whole thing on there, I don't know. Underneath, because this is pitted here, so it's probably a little thin. So now I've got this band. I just use a sheet metal bender. You pretty much need one of those. There's cheap ones you can buy, and then there's the expensive one that's a piece of crap that I have. But it wasn't expensive when I got it. You can kind of do it like that, so it's kind of like that groove right there. It's a double bent it. You can do this with a piece of thick flat steel and a vise and just hammer it over. That's all you really need to do. I think Fitzy's Metal shows a lot of that stuff. Sort of got it like that. I just used the metal bender here, here, and here. So here, there, and there in the sheet metal bender. Kind of bent those angles. And I got to made it a little bit too round. I got to back some of that off. Take a look at it. My metal roller is not working very good, so I'm just going to, I'm just doing this here. You can do a lot with a vice, you won't just try and get the shape right. Well, that might be pretty close there. What do you think? Let's go look at it and see. Alright, let's take a look. I think that's pretty close. That's close enough. I'm going to put this corner up in there, the front corner, which I need to trim. I think it's going to be close enough where I can just clamp it and work with it from there. So I need to cut out around this vent. All right there. I don't want to cut it too low. It's going to go up a little bit. So. And then that there. I'm going to have to trim right here. A little bit, notch it out. Try that out, see what happens. Well, I'd say it's pretty close. I kind of cut some more stuff up in here. It's hitting some stuff, so I'm gonna have to trim up there. And I hope I didn't cut it too far down. Probably not. We'll do some trimming on this and fit this in there. It just takes a little bit of finessing and then it'll go in place, no problem. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start spot welding the edge here and get this piece in place. <clears throat> and I know I'm going to have to do some more bending to it. It may not be the correct width, probably isn't. So, kind of see how that works out. We'll get one right here. I think I got both layers, did I? Gotta get up closer to really see. I'll see where I can get you guys to be not in the way. Maybe if I put you guys over there, but I might, I'm, you're gonna be looking at my helmet most of the time. We'll see how it works.
Well, I was setting this panel on, of course, see, look at how far they got that thing hanging out there. Then it's tight over here. Um, and what, what needs to be done is since we have an original heater channel on that side, um, I need to measure from the bolt holes. Let's look here. From the bolt holes over to the edge and then just set this one. Uh, again, I've set it on the pan. I can see that I need to set it forward just a, about a sixteenth. So if I set it forward a sixteenth, all the bolt holes line up. So what I'm going to do is uh, look at that side over there and go by the distance between here and the edge on the inside, this edge on the original heater channel where I haven't cut it or anything, and then go with where I put it there now I don't know what I'm gonna do yet I've still got to take this back off and just treat everything clean everything you know paint everything behind um, but yeah I was thinking about using even panel adhesive to put this thing on but I don't know I don't have to fit this whole thing first so because I got what I got to do is I got to find out what that distance is and then grind this edge down to match okay so that it's the same as it is on that side okay the distance between the bolt in the in the inner side so if I do like say this one I measure this distance then I measure this distance here then the whole thing should be in the right place so then what I do once I do once I've done that then I grow I'm gonna have to grind it and fit it and then Maybe you do something like mark it so that I put it in exactly the same place. I don't know. That's probably what I'm going to go with. And I don't know if I'm going to use panel adhesive or not because it's going to be tough to kind of set it in place with the wet adhesive on it, trying to move it around and all that. It's kind of tough to do. So I don't know. We'll see on that. I'm going to kind of think about that one for a little while before I do it. I was thinking about panel adhesive. And the reason I was thinking about that is because then it... I can coat this whole area and stop, make sure that it doesn't rust in there. Now, if I did it by welding it, I could actually, you know, take this back off, clean up, treat everything right. And then I could just put it in place where it's supposed to be and then weld it and then weld it and weld it and then not have to take it back off. And then it'd be fine. And if I use the pinch welder, then I have to have raw metal along the edge here on the inside, which is not going to help for making it last any longer, is it? So anyway, those are all the different options. You, you know, you always lay out all your options of things that you can do and then figure out what the best one is for what you're doing that day. It might not be the best for in, in all occasions, but it's all the best for the circumstances and everything that you're putting together. And, you know, knowing all of that and then figuring out which one to use is always the best way to go. All right, we'll get on this here pretty soon. I guess I'll take this back off and paint underneath there. I'll leave you guys from watching that, but I'll go ahead and get that done now. All right, let's take a look at what I'm figuring here. I got all this stuff all welded in. I'm gonna finish painting. I letting that cool down up front and while I was doing that while I was resting I decided to measure the center of this bolt to the edge because remember this is cut completely off it's whatever that is what's that almost an inch off three quarters of an inch too wide so this is the deal is from here to there basically what you need is you need the width from where the bolts line up here and there to be pretty close. I mean, it's got a, it's a little bit of wiggle room in there, but you need it to be pretty close. Otherwise, it's going to be a little struggle trying to put it on. It still might be. And you have those big giant covers that, you know, that will cover just about anything. So you could be a little off. There's, there's a little wiggle room in there. But you want it to be from this side to that side pretty close. So what I did is I measure from this center of this bolt hole 
to the edge and that's three quarters of an inch. And I measured it in several places along here, not just once, measured a few times and it was about the same. So then I measured from the center of this bolt over three quarter of an inch. Now that should be where this thing lines up. So when I put this up there, it should line up, if I have it lined up there, and a, a bunch of those dots showing on the place that it's not been replaced, the metal mm -hmm. that's not been placed in the middle, then the side should follow in with no problem. As long as I put it, now if you look at where it bolts to the pan here, I'm gonna line it up with about where I've got it to bolt to the other pan. Just eyeball it pretty close, like I said, about a sixteenth to an eighth in the a little bit forward and then the whole bolts line up here on these this well what I thought I'd talk to you guys about is you know these are all the things that you always weigh out whenever you're doing something like this there's a ton of different ways to do it one way is to use panel adhesive to put this on and that would probably work fine uh, just grind these down to bare metal and then the thing that's good about that is that um, you'd have a continuous surface all the way along here holding it on um, you and panel adhesive is very strong if you put a lot of clamps on it you make sure you got a lot of clamps on there if you're going to use something like that um, then the other issue is thing that will solve is it won't rust on this panel it won't get because you won't weld it and it will get hot and some people say, well, that's not strong, you know, it's your opinion, whatever, it's your car, you decide those things for yourself. Um, usually, when panel adhesive isn't strong, is let's say I put a chisel in here and I tried to chisel this off, then it wouldn't be as strong. So if you had an accident damage in this door, it would pull upwards on this, it wouldn't try and chisel it in. I don't think, unless it would hit really low, it would be just kind of an odd situation that it would have probably do that and then it could peel that's when it's not as strong as the other so the next thing i'll do is weigh out okay i could grind this off and i could use my harbor freight pinch welder to put this on and i'd have to have this area clean i'd have to have underneath here clean i'd have to have the top of this clean all have to be really nice and clean and make sure that i pinch it really good that these things meet right perfectly when they're shut they meet really good like that. They need to be like, you can clean them off for a little bit, make sure they're really good, nice mating surface for that. And that's the Chicago Electric Spot Welder. These things work pretty good. So the downside to that is you'll have exposed metal on the top, bottom, in the middle, and it can accumulate rust the same way as if you just drill holes and spot and plug weld all the holes that can be done that way if you really don't care too much you could probably line these up together and just clean up that edge and edge weld it what edge weld through the two layers and all of those things would probably work fine the last one's a little bit of a shortcut method but it would work then you need to figure out which way is the best way for your timeline and all of those things so the reason I'm just kind of going through all these things is this is how you do every repair whenever you do something you kind of weigh out all the things of your situation what might be best for you doing it I haven't really decided on what I'm gonna do yet but one of the ways one of the things I was thinking about that might be a problem when I put this panel on is if I put panel adhesive on here First of all, I'm probably going to have to just put this thing up here and fit this thing and grind off all that edge first. So, yeah, I kind of like going, well, I have to grind that all off with a grinder. I'm not sure if I want to do all that work. Um, it'd be nice if I could use a plasma cutter and cut it off. Maybe I'll just clamp it together and use a plasma cutter and cut that. I haven't decided yet, but that has to be cut off because it's literally all that is in the way, hanging way out. And then this edge, same thing. There's like this big tail hanging out here and that all has to be cleaned up. Now, if I plug welded it, if I clamped it in place and plug welded it, then I could do that all afterwards because it wouldn't matter whether I heat it up. 
if you have panel adhesive on there, if you heat it up, it'll ruin the panel adhesive and it won't adhere very well. And if I pinch weld it, then it won't, you know, it won't matter. It, 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 I could cut it afterwards as well. Now, the problem with pinch welding is you got 18 gauge steel here. I've got two layers here. You know, I've got 18 gauge on the bottom, the original was probably, and then I've got another layer here. I didn't peel this off. I still have it there. I cleaned it up by, quite a bit, but there's really no need to peel that off. A lot of people think, oh my God, you got to peel that off. Well, you know, it's, it. what difference would this thing being a 16th of an inch up make? And the answer to that is nothing. It wouldn't make a difference at all. So the same thing when guys go, oh, the heater channel height, as long as the door shuts, you should be fine. Like if you put the heater channel in, shut, you know, I leave the doors on when I do them. When I do the heater channels, I have my doors still on. I'll leave them on. And then what I'll do is I'll set, I'll shut the door, make sure it doesn't rub the bottom, check my gap on the top and bottom before I weld it in. And that's the most focused. And then I make sure it's not too far this way. Usually when it's lined up here and inside here and everything, um, it the width issue won't be a problem. Usually it's perfect. Even with the cheaper heater channels, it's usually pretty darn good. So uh, as long as it's lined up, lined up, you know, going in all its places, front and back is lined up, then usually it just works perfectly. Sometimes you'll have, like I said, you'll have a few elongated holes. Not a big deal. It's kind of normal. Well, no, none of those things are the wrong way to do it. You know, so I'm just trying to give you guys a heads up on you can do whatever you want to do with your car. Um, now, I'm thinking right now, I'm just telling you what I'm thinking. I'll, I'll do what I'm going to do here shortly. But I'm thinking if I put this up there with panel adhesive on, you know, first of all, I'd have this all bare metal and I would be able to have my mark there. So that's an issue that I need to can think about. Um, so if I did that, I think it might be kind of hard to line it up where if I put it in place and clamped it and then spot welded it and you're having all that stuff moving it all around when you put it up there and you kind of have that panel adhesive on there, you're kind of moving it all around and stuff. It's kind of, you know, you might lose some of it in some places. So it, it could be, and get it all over your hands. If you had two people, maybe you could put it up there that way and it would work. Uh, I'm not sure yet on that. So, um, that's a concern for, for me right now. Um, so I may just put it up here and then just weld it and deal with the potential that I'll have rust again. You know, like I said, the, the car's going to have a different life from here out. You know, it, the thing is people think, oh, wow, it's rusted that, you know, in, in 50 years, it's going to rust in another 30 or it, it's got a better life now. Hopefully, hopefully you keep the car in the garage after you're done. You, you know, you're not going to leave it out in the weather and drive it through the snow and whatever else. This was in Santa Barbara, so it was in the coastal. We have a, and Santa Barbara has a real strong coastal salt that comes in, and cars do rust in Santa Barbara. So, um, yeah, it was in Santa Barbara, so it, you know, probably saw a lot more abuse than it's going to see from here on out. Unless somebody you know, buys it in Florida someday, if, you know, whatever. But I have no control over that, so... I'll just do the best for, I'll do it for me, and then whatever they want to do someday when I do sell it, I don't know if I'm going to keep it or sell it, I'm probably going to keep it, but I'm just saying, you know, whatever that time is, that's another issue. So that's what I was trying to say in another video, that there's a ton of different ways to do something right. You, you just have to decide, you know, based on your timeline, based on your uh, skills, based on what you have what is going to be the best way to do something and knowing all the different ways is nice but then you try and weigh it out to where which one's the best for this job timeline or whatever it, budget it's all those things take into factor of what you're trying to do so anyway we'll get on with it i'll we'll find out later how we do it so now i've got it all painted inside here it's got some paint on all that so and this is epoxy primer. That's probably good enough. It's not going to rust. So 
what I've got is I've got it on here and I've got the marks lined up on the inside, uh, black marks. I can't really tilt the camera that way and you might not be able to see it anyway. But here's the deal. Remember when I put this on, I laid it on the inside of here, right? So when I did that, it pushed this one over just a little bit. So what I've got to do, see the type of things you need to look for, is I've got to bend that one out more, inward more, and then so that, you know, it'll fit. So I've got that to do. Oh, well, but for some reason, it seems like the front is okay. I've had to take off these in and grind off my welds because I put welds on this side. I shouldn't have done that. Should have been on the sides of it. Wasn't thinking about how close they were going to be. But that one seems to line up here. So it all lines up on the inside here. You can see the marks here. You can see my mark. It could use to be, I guess I should have that mark just to where it's not there. So I'm thinking I might it might be easier for this thing to weld this in, even though, yeah, I'll get some, have some potential future rust issue issues. Just because then, because trying to jockey this thing around with panel adhesive on it is just going to be too much of a mess. And it's going to be moving around, and I won't be able to see my marks, and I think it's just going to be a more aggravation. And so, even though I'd like to use that, I'm going to have to see I got this one here where the mark doesn't show quite and then that one it shows a little bit so maybe it needs to go that way just a little bit but uh just kind of jockeying around right now to get it first fit and then I'll see I'll just bend this thing out I'll take it off and I'll grab that and just move it over and get everything out a little bit more move it out about uh, probably almost a quarter of an inch time it's done it walked a little bit and my bends a little bit different so if I just jerk it out a little bit if it's if this thing is off a little bit on the inside really let's take a look at the pan so you can see here that if it's if it's off hanging in a little bit it's not gonna matter so if it's hanging in a little bit too far that's okay as far as that metal edge but the holes are what they're trying to meet to line up the rest of it you know just pure eyewash so I'll probably just remove this and take a pair of pliers and stuff and just kind of jerk that thing over and put it back on and off a bunch of times until it starts to line up. That's the process. All right, so here's what I ended up with. Um, you know, I don't even know if this is going to work right because I've never tried to use the pinch welder with this is weldable primer on here and these edges. So I ground these down to metal where it touches. And then I'm going to put, I put weldable primer on here. We'll see how it goes. It may interfere with that adhesion of the welds. And if it does, then I'll just have to drill it and spot weld it. You know, using weldable primer is not always necessary. People use it all the time for every little thing they put on. It's just that they're bought into the sales gimmick of the whole thing. It's for certain circumstances like this one where you just can't get in there with anything. But um, as soon as I weld this with the pincher, that weldable primer right there in that spot is gone and that's going to be the first part that's going to rust okay because it's gotten hot once once metal gets hot once it rusts easier so that security blanket is kind of hmm but wherever it's not then it's not going to and this is definitely you know this area of the car is susceptible to getting wet you know when you wash it water is going to go down here there's just constantly water is going to be hitting this part of the car so Protecting it the best way I can. I'm just going to try and do it this way. Just thinking, well, if I put some of that on there, it's a little bit of insurance. I'm going to take a straw and spray inside the heater channel as much as I can after two. So those are things that I always do. And like I said, if you bought a brand new heater channel, all of this is raw. And there's nothing on that. They don't put anything on it. So this is actually probably better than if I went with a new heater channel because there's at least some coating on here even though it's going to get burned off. So uh, that's why I do it that way. Um, and, and like I said, I have a can of Volvo primer around all the time, but I don't like to use it. Even like 
Fitzy's metal, he doesn't use it. What he says is you can drill through here. You can take a drill, dull drill bit and knock and paint all this, okay? And then you can knock the paint off of just those areas and it'll do the same thing. And he's right, that's exactly what it will do because right where you weld it, that paint, this, this weldable primer is gone. It's gone right in that area where you welded it. So if you, you know, I've seen guys tear off whole panels and redo it. Oh, look, see, I saw rust between the panels and it was always right next to the weld. Mm, okay, well, that did a whole lot of good. So anyway, but that's the reason you use it and know that it's not a fix-all. It isn't, it's not the solve problem solver for everything. I would not use it on everything. That's just my opinion. Anyway, that's how I deal with it. All right, so I tried the pinch welder on here. So you guys know, it, it does work. It actually will weld really good on some things. I mean, I welded this on here, two layers of 20 gauge, and it just, it welded on there permanently. So it, it just, you have to test everything you do it on. So I think because this is 18 gauge and this is double layer, um, and maybe the weld through primer, I'm not sure. It just doesn't like it. So if it's on clean metal, always test it. I just use a hammer and chisel and it came back off. So I'm not going to use that to put this on. So I put it up there again. Let me put it up again and again and again. I don't know how many times I'm going to do it, but I just wanted to uh, pull it back off. I forget what the reason for it was for it right now because I kind of got frustrated with it and went in the house for a while. So you know, I, I'm not that patient. I get pretty frustrated with stuff like this, especially when I've done it, put it on, taken off like how many times and lined it all up, spent all this time and then do it over and over. So just like all of you guys, I know you guys get the same way. No different. The next thing I did, next thing I did is I always took this off because I was considering using my hole punch. Oh, anyway, that's what I took it off for. Use my hole punch along here. This is double thick, so it doesn't want to punch through that. So now I'm down to either I could drill it, which if you guys know, I don't really like to drill. And that's just a lot of holes to drill. All those holes would take a very long time. So what I'm going to do is clamp it up here and I'm going to weld the edge all the way along and then just grind it up to it. And It'll be fine that way. It could be done all those different ways I was explaining. But then you decide what you're willing to do. And after putting it on and off this many times and everything else, I'm just to the point where, heck with it. I'm just going to do the easiest route. So I'll talk to you guys later in the video. Here's what the rough end looks like. Um, before primer, before seam sealer. So on this, I'm going to seam seal it. You know, some of the areas where I'm filling it to make it look Whatever, I don't need to use seam sealer, but um, on the areas where it's going to be roughed in, I mean, this is going to have a running board right here. You're going to have to be looking underneath the car and know that it was there to see if it. So, so once I wipe seam sealer on that edge, it'll take away some of that. And then primer on there, it'll be pretty much gone. So you, you really aren't going to notice either way. And this will be plenty strong. It's just a matter of how you want to do it. I figured this would be the easiest way. That's what I'm going to do. Talk to you guys later. And let's take a look at how crappy that looks because a lot of people think that it has to look really good to be done good. And it doesn't really. 
And then we'll take a look at it right now, right after I get done grinding it. All right, so look how much better that looks once you grind it. Then all you do is just finger some seam sealer along here. That kind of fills in those little gaps a little bit. If you wanted to, you could weld it all the way along, but it's actually stronger if you just spot it because it has circles where the stuff is held in it. Less ability to crack. So it doesn't matter. It, it really wouldn't matter on this. You could do it however you want. But I'm just saying, this is fine, really, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, we got that piece in place there. I'm just going to go ahead and weld that in. All right, so I built this one off of camera, and it's because it's kind of, this is kind of a higher level of making a piece, but I'm just going to talk to you about what I did so that if you have something like this, it, it might, you know, it's a little bit of a challenge to make. So I had to make this piece kind of like that. It's going to fit on there like that. Now, you might be wondering why I bent this uphill like that. And it's because this is going away from here. So when it goes away from there, it has to go up on this part for it to reach. But what I'm going to do, of course, just lap this sucker in here. No science to it here. Just going to lap that in. Sort of like that. So I'll lap this side part first. And then I'll lap over here on the, along the bottom. And then what I'll do is the last thing I'm going to do is kind of bend this up and against that. And then it'll be a slight lap maybe or a butt. I'm not sure how it's going to end up. But um, I'll just kind of grind that where I need it to be and then connect it to the bottom of here somehow. So, you know, it's not really rocket science. So... Now people think you have to make this piece fit exactly right. Um, it's going to fit as I weld it in on this one. So this is a little trickier if you're new trying to do something like this. It's a really odd shaped hole. Then what I'll do is after I get this done, then I'll make a piece that goes from here over to there. Kind of has a bend right in the middle. Kind of like a V, I guess I'm going to say. And then it's going to go down to here and weld on. So that, look, um, It'll, it'll look kind of like what's over here. Now, does it need to look exactly the same? And the answer to that is that you can't look at both sides at the same time. So it just needs to be relatively close and then, you know, go from there. So I don't know, maybe I'll clamp it on the bottom through this hole right here. Let's do that. Well, I can't get a magnetic hold on this, so what I'm going to do is, is just actually, it's most critical is what I need to do, just have this edge line up, and then the bottom. 
falls right into place if you can see that so all I gotta do is just hold it right here and then spot it and then uh, should be fine so I'll go ahead and do that Right, so I cut this, or made this piece here. You know, this is a little high there, so I got to trim. It's gonna have to guesstimate it, like it's about right, right here. This has got to be flatter down here because it's gonna come down. So I have to trim off some, like, let's see, about right there, like that. Let's take a look at it in a second. All right, let's take a look. So it's like that now. You know, a little bit of a gap there. I can fill that in with the weld, no problem. And this edge, I'm going to have to. I'll slit it up right here. Let's just do that real quick. Bring it back in. All right, let's take a look. So I got this thing like that. Let me see. Into. a little bit of a slit right there push so that can push down so like a little pie shape out of that All right so once I weld this in just kind of place it it can be lapped a little bit and a little bit of filler fill it in nothing fancy then I'll just be able to pound that down pound this in kind of get that shape a little bit and then it'll kind of make it die out right there and then what I'll do after I'm done is I'll make this piece the layover piece and then I think I'll use some weld through primer on I guess I'm gonna have to weld it and I want something on there to protect it so I use that on this like I said I don't use it on everything just on certain things where it's between two layers sometimes it's handy Hopefully I've got enough. Doesn't take much, just a little bit. All right, we'll just form this one up. There we go. Like this. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see how the other side goes. I think it was something like this. Yeah, something like that. All right, so I had to make a, I don't know, it didn't really help much with the light, did it? A uh, little carrier for this thing. You guys can see it. So I just took two pieces of metal, I used the pinch welder, put it in place with that. Take two pieces of metal, made L's like that, and then made a little strap that goes across between them. And then that's going to hold this thing hot right now. Just got there welding it in. Hold that thing in place so that 
can be screwed back on the pan. I bought a new one of these. It's just six bucks at Wolfsburg West. So anyway, they're kind of expensive for something like that. But anyway, it's I just didn't feel like tapping and drilling a piece of steel and cutting it. It's a pain in the butt to cut something that thick. All right, so I welded in my nut cert. Those of you guys who don't know, I use these from the outside and just shove it in there. Uh, I know that's not the original way to do it. So if you look here, when I put the fender on, I'm sorry, I didn't show you guys, but the fender comes down right here. And if you notice, this line is a little bit too far forward. So once I fill all this, this will be flush and look like it was never replaced so you know I, i'm not trying to make everything look underneath like it wasn't uh, i'd never do that i'm not going to start doing that um there's no reason to all it is is just when you're done and this is filled this has got filler on all this stuff it's going to look exactly like it was when it was new pretty much I mean, you got a little bit of difference in this side to the other, but not much. This definitely isn't the one way, only way to do metalwork channel. There's a million different ways to do this stuff. And some people think there's only one way. And honestly, you guys, there's just, there's just so many different things you can do to fix stuff and take it to whatever level of niceness you want. So... But you can see that this is going to come together really nice. When that's got filler, or I just put a uh, seam sealer in that crack here, that's going to look pretty good. And it's going to be underneath the running board. I'll sand all this down and clean this up. A little surface rust there I'll clean up, and then I'll get this all finished out and prime it in the next video. And then I'll work on this fender here and fix some of this stuff and get this all cleaned up here looking pretty good and then we'll move on to some other stuff there's plenty to do on this car anyway i'll talk to you guys in the next video please like share and subscribe